right, let's get this thing going. One second. All right, we're still waiting on uh, Troy, so uh, I'm playing a little music and invite some people in, give them time to come in. Todd Medina sold you on studios. What's going on here? Democracies, aristocracies, oligarchies, monarchies, hierarchies, presidents and popes. What's the real dope? What's this all about? Faith, hope, doubt. That's all that earth stuff, man. I am a multi-dimensional, high vibrational, evolutionary being and I'm tired of hiding it. I am soul. I don't care who or what tried or is trying to deceive us, call it the devil or another's messiah, prophet or god, it's all the same to me. Whoever they are, they can never take our souls and that's when we came here to learn. From the burn of being wrong, denying who we are, taking orders, lawless laws, a branded existence, but not anymore. I am divinity. Yeah. All right. The power we hold to mold the future, heavenly nirvana. From the inside, present, eternal. It's time to be a bolder flame. The game isn't the same. We are the spirit, science, synthesis. The action of conscious thought, alignment, transmuting to a living wisdom. Yeah. No longer dreaming the life. I am living the dream. All right, let's see. <clears throat> oh, there he is. Okay. Right on. All right. This ought to be interesting. It's always good to meet new people. Let's see what we got here with Troy. Troy writes some good stuff. All right, I'm going to send you a little thing. It's going to say start your video. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Let me unmute you. Wait. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Looks like you're uh, doing what we're doing, living out of your car. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> it's kind of my, my bedroom slash office. Really? <laughs> I didn't know that about you. Are you on the move? I mean, are you, are you a no, are you a nomad or what? Yeah, for the last three and a half years. Oh wow, wow, that's trippy. Uh, so three and a half years, yeah. right? So, I I left for the last time. I left on October sixteenth, twenty. Wait, October thirteenth, twenty sixteen. So about three years ago so i've been doing uh -huh. about as long as you have uh, cool where are you at right where, where are you at right now i'm in taos new mexico at my brother's place at the moment oh wow yeah yeah and and do you have and do you have any and do you have any plans to go anywhere anytime soon any, any specific places or anything no 
not really. The future feels unpredictable. Um, I feel open to whatever shows up and feels feels good and not really a clear sense of where that might be. <laughs> isn't that crazy though? You know, I mean, isn't that how it's going down? And and let me just say, it's a pleasure to meet you. Morgan uh, brought me to your attention and she really, really uh, resonates with the stuff you write. We'll talk about it, but it's a pleasure to meet you, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, yeah, it feels, it feels, feels if it resonates talking to you mm-hmm. um yeah so yeah this isn't a conventional q a it's just a conversation we just do it in front of a bunch of brothers and sisters and try to assist mm-hmm. everybody and but uh so nice. you've been doing this for three and a half years so let me ask you this famous soul speaks 5d question uh when did you wake up did you have something that Mm -hmm. like shook you up or did you just slide into it like about one percent of us (laughs) yeah uh no there were there were some catalysts for sure um among them were some medicine ceremony experiences and some workshops and a divorce that got me really interested in in this world (laughs) i like the way you put that (laughs) interested (laughs) yeah uh it's funny how those uh little fires the universe lights under your ass can do that make you interested in things that that we're always coming through but you just kind of ignored right so i mean so is that when it happened what is that when it happened three and a half years ago i mean what what possession um well Seven years ago, I had a, a medicine journey that I imagine opened something in me, but there was nothing very obvious for the next year or so. But then yeah. six years ago, uh, divorce. And that really felt like the moment that I consciously started to shift things that I, that I said, okay, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what I want anymore. Um, yeah. And I was so anxious. I wanted to find something to help with the anxiety besides just self-medicating because i was basically just smoking marijuana every day i wanted a, yeah. a, a different solution so i started reading an eckhart tolle book i started going to some workshops and i started exploring myself and um and then yeah just books started cu- showing up in my world and channeled teachings and and more medicine experiences and so um that just seemed to open me up uh, more and more so that was six years ago. So that would have been what, uh, 12? Uh, I can't even, I can't, can you, uh, add and subtract like you used to and all that stuff in the short term memory? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that was 2000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so, I mean, most like, of it okay. So about, most of it was about four or five years ago. Okay. And that's when so, I started writing that's when i started dancing that's when i started exploring myself in new ways my creativity oh you and i are gonna get along that's how i woke up i woke up riding and dancing for two years and walking i lived on the streets for two years and just walked everywhere we our cars Mm -hmm. in the shop right now we're over in uh in a remote area of northern california which is the closest town is like eight miles away and that's over a mountain (laughs) so it's a it's a long eight miles but uh, I've been walking up to the store every day. They have one little store over here and it's probably, it's a 20, it's a brisk 25 minute walk. And, uh, you know, it brings back a lot of memories. Um, you know, obviously if you've been on the move like this, you spend a lot of time alone. I can identify yeah. with your plant medicine experiences in my wake up. Uh, I did the spirit molecule about 25 times and did some, uh, mm-hmm. um, what is it called uh mdma you know mda but uh, the and then the dancing and the writing i mean so there's some similarities but my 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 curiosity is in you know a lot of people they when they start to go through this process you know they have different faces uh and frequencies of the universe that communicate with them 
and I guess we'll all figure mm -hmm. out how that goes because it all goes to one is that you know like I had an apparition of a cosmic Christ appear in the trees and start talking to me that's how my trip started mm -hmm. but I came mm -hmm. to understand later that it was me talking to me but you know without right. getting all those complexities uh have mm -hmm. you I mean you know some people hear a voice some people just know what to do some people you know they get a galactic visitation I mean did you have anything that jumps out uh you know that jumps out in your journey in those early days hmm yeah i don't know that i had any experiences quite like what you're describing in terms of um hearing voices or or seeing anything unusual outside of those yeah plant medicine experiences um but i started having a lot of channeled books come into my life and that felt like mm something very profound was happening experientially and, and energetically for me as I read those. Um, whatever encoding was in those transmissions was was being experienced by me in a way that felt pretty undeniable. So right. that's something that stands out. And I yeah. think I, yeah, I mentioned it, dance. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, I mentioned dance because I started to feel like something was embodying me or co-creating with me um through dance and that yeah that started having me question like what's moving me and am i even the one in control and so that that seemed to open a door as well and what kind of dance electronic hip-hop uh I'm just curious. more just like um yeah no i was going to like ecstatic dances and soul motion and stuff yeah. like that it was um yeah. conscious dance uh yeah, yeah. I started doing that in groups but more and more. It just became a solo practice that I felt like a self communion sort of thing um, happening. You know, with I used to say, I mean, I can relate to this because I used to say all the time, um, you know, in reflection after that two year period, really it was about a three year period. Um, you know, I'd go into the clubs like five, six nights a week and I was mm -hmm. on the streets. So, I mean, I would, I would go in, you know, and I'd get a little bit, you know buzzed and then i dance all night and it was like you're describing it was like there was no i didn't dance with women i didn't dance with anybody i just danced by myself mm -hmm. and uh yeah. <clears throat> i got a lot of strange looks because sometimes i was in you know i was in all black clubs and uh you know other types of underground clubs but but i remember um like i don't know it was probably probably like eight or nine months into it i got like this this i had this experience and and it, and it was it was all about the dancing and, and it was like telling me that mm -hmm. you're basically connecting to your soul you were you're grounding yeah. you know they didn't it, that those mm -hmm. words didn't come but it was like you're connecting to your soul this is your soul you're actually hanging on and for me as a human a part of me i was like hanging on for dear life but the soul part of me was just like beaming you know yeah i don't know I, if that's i don't know you get a you get a big you get a big high i mean i used to come out of these clubs and i would literally i'd take my shirt off and just wring it and it would be pure you know liquid you know, sweat you know <laughs> my pants would be my jeans would be soaked but um yeah there's something to be said for movement mm -hmm. it really is yeah definitely nonverbal the nonverbal part of it um <clears throat> you know what i mean i mean it's that's cool. I haven't talked to, to another guy that really did something like that. So, I mean, so this is three and a half years. You're, you're, I mean, what's happening? Are, are you, are you, and I, and I totally understand what you're talking about with the whole, you can't plan anything anymore. It's like, it just kind of yeah. happens, right? Have you had any experiences yeah. like that where you, you're just like, no, I got to get up and go. I got to go to this place and I got to get there as quick as possible. Um, Generally, it feels more soft and gradual for me. Um, mm. And yeah, not a sense of what tomorrow is going to look like. It, it kind of just shows up in the moment. That's how my, my movement um, seems to be in, in pretty much all of life in terms of my creative flow. Like I'll just get an inspiration in a moment and I'll start writing or I'll make a video. So it's the same thing with where I go next. And um, this is the first time time I've landed somewhere where I might be able to stay for an extended period of time, um, in in a while, in in a few years probably, 
So yeah, it's interesting just that feeling of is it time to move? Like usually, it's something in me gets starts to get restless, um, and I don't yeah. I don't often like to stay in one place for long. So this is this is different. I feel like oh maybe I can be here for a little bit. So that's been interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, right. And so, like uh, your post. I mean, when did you 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 mentioned that you started writing? Um, mm -hmm. how, how did that happen? Were you a writer before? Did you consider yourself a writer before? No, I was an elementary school teacher, and um, I I went to a workshop five years ago. And I had never really done the workshop thing before, not much. And it inspired me to journal for the first time in my life. So I started journaling and then I felt I felt a, an inspiration to share some of my journaling online. So I started doing that on, on Facebook, um, first in a group with other people from the workshops. And then I started feeling like I wanted to put it on my wall and, and start me be seen more family. And then from there, it just became blogs and became working on a book. And it became like um, more of considering myself a writer, you know? Yeah. So in, in your, from your perspective, I mean, where does this information come from that you're putting out? <laughs> I don't know. It just shows yeah. up. I mean, <laughs> I could say I can see how it relates to my experience. Um, and it's really cool because it feels like everything that I that I experience, everything that I go through, all the all the pieces that can be like kind of challenging and crunchy, they end up becoming fuel for that expression. And then it feels very purposeful. Everything that I experience in life yeah. is sort of transmuted into this expression that other people can experience and benefit from. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just it flo it flows right out of you, right? Yeah, it flows out. yeah, it does. I, and I'm amazed by what comes out. I, I wrote a, I made a video the other day of feeling like I'm becoming my own teacher because I don't even know what's going to happen. And then I learned from myself through just allowing the creative process to unfold on its own. Yeah. yeah. And, and so like, if you take yourself out of it and you look at everything that's happening outside of you, particularly people, you know, people that you come into contact with or that you pick up on their energy on, on social media, whatever. How does that all look to you? Do you, do you see any type of correlation between, uh, you know, you and people like me <laughs> and Morgan uh, with this gypsy thing happening? You know, do you see something going on with that where more and more people are just hitting the road? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if there's more people sort of being embodied in this way or if, or if they're just coming into my experience more these days through through resonance um, alignment. But it does seem like there's a lot of people that are starting to um, feel that there's something that wants to create through us, as us, with us, and being surrendering in a way that to become the vessel for that. Um, yeah. Is that what you're referring to? Sort of that. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I love yeah. what you said because, you know, and I, yeah, I love what you said because, well, because it gives me some validation. <laughs> if I got to be honest about it, but if, but, and I don't know where this came from. It was in the last two or three days. And it was almost verbatim what you said, like what was coming in. And I would just describe what, what the source of what's coming in. Uh, is the same thing you're talking about or we're talking about that you pull down and write just like you've done like I've done especially in the early yeah days. but what I was getting was that it was like okay like I'm just going to try to reenact the conversation or what was coming in in human terms because we all know it never comes in words but it was like hey Todd uh, you know all this stuff that you're looking at that you were kind of like heading towards or working on or you know uh, formulating sology sology plans when where's the website all this stuff right and i and it just came in it was like you know what uh you got all the time in the world you need to let go of all of that stuff and just watch how it happens 
And of course, yeah. the human freaks out. The human freaks right. out. Mine does a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not as not, you know, I'm I'm probably better than most because I've been through a lot. But I mean, so the change and 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 maybe extreme conditions and things like that don't really bother me. Like they probably do a lot of people. But what it does do is it's like taking me to a place where you can't even um, c uh, contemplate or consider these these. And I guess I'd have to you know, say these old ways, like the old paradigm, like, like anything you thought you like had to clear it all out and then something's going to come in and I have no idea what it is. Now for you, do you, does it challenge your human aspect? I mean, do you get, do you get a little rattled? Do you ever have a come to Jesus meeting with the universe? Like I do every now and then <laughs> drop, <laughs> drop a few F yeah. <laughs> like what's going on. Here? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's definitely challenging it because it, it it stimulates all of those fears to the surface. It feels all the all the separation perspectives, all the lack and scarcity. It it just it seems like it invites all that up to be the uh, with definitely um, a lot of my experience is engaging with that and and softening that relationship. Um, just through feels like just a, a background trust that sort of comes and goes helps me to um all that and to just I don't know, this feeling that it's all purposeful, it's all happening for my benefit and for the benefit of all. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh I used to write all the time that, you know, um faith is a lonely existence and <laughs> i don't know why i used to write it but i figured well i'm writing it because i'm walking down the street every day by myself and i'm in solitude 99 percent of the time but it, it's it's still held on i mean it's still that's that little uh gem or whatever you want to call it epiphany keeps coming back and uh do you feel like it's a very singular experience are you finding some uh collaboration and co-creation and you know uh, dealings with other people or is this mostly mostly a, an individual thing for you uh i lost you for a minute there so i think we're back now but i am not he asked a question here. it's okay it's okay you didn't hear it you're good can you hear me All right, everybody, let's put our energy together. Okay, he popped out. He popped out, he'll pop back in. Yeah, so uh, here's something cool. Wait, let me see if I can get him back up in here. Okay. Yeah, I think he's having a little bit of a signal issue. Uh here's uh yeah i can you back i think i'm back can, can you see me yeah you're yeah you're back now you're back now yeah. so i mean like just take us through the day like well the day is the present isn't it like do you think you might be hanging in tiles for a while you don't have any i mean have you got uh have you ever had you said it kind of happens slowly and comfortably it sounds like you ever get a call where you just got to go? It's a little choppy. I'm missing pieces of what you're saying. Can you say it one more time? No, it's okay. You talk. <laughs> <laughs> you talk. I heard you asking about my, my day. Like, um, well, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just... I mean, you're obviously focused on what you're doing. This is, it looks to be the priority is you're you're giving priority to this guidance that's giving you this gypsy life yeah. and and this uh you know presence in the present moment kind of thing serving the collective i mean uh do you look past today do you do you yeah. look into what am i going to be doing in a week from now or a month from now or any of that stuff or you've gotten rid of all that survival crap i mean focus there but mm. 
I can't hear him. I think his signal's bad. Yeah. That's all right. That's all right. Send, uh, I see can this uh, note from Cat. Yeah, I can see. I mean, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. It's cutting out on my end. Is it cutting out on your end, too? Yeah. No. It's, well, yeah, you're cutting out on your end. That's all right. It's okay. We'll work okay. through it. We'll yeah. Work through it. Is it if it's so, on my end? Is it my connection? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. We're good. Okay. We'll just talk fast. <laughs> so, you know, a lot a lot of people have come on this show. There's been, you know, a lot of shows. And everybody has a different story. And everybody's, uh, you know, reality is is real and most of the people that i've talked to most of them was a very small percentage i'd say probably like less than five percent that don't really have any interaction with any dragon energy or any galactic star family energy or or any specific divine essences they're just dealing with one universal voice basically is how i describe it that sounds like how you're you're navigating this trip that's how that's what it sounds like is, is that accurate yeah yeah i don't feel a specific um source guiding me it's uh yeah and and in terms of future yeah there's just, just very little future in my experience in terms of a, an idea of what it's going to look like or moving towards something specific um i don't know where money is going to come from i don't know where i'm going to be living uh there's yeah. Most days I wake up with, with nothing on my schedule and just moment to moment living. Like yeah. when an inspiration pops up to drive somewhere to drive to the park, to drive to the ashram down the street, to um to pull out my phone and connect with somebody, to to write something. Like it's all just what wants to happen in each moment. And then really where i imagine them to be coming from and what those energies might create and sort of navigating that experience of what to be a yes to and what to um sort of have boundaries with myself around in terms of am i being on my phone maybe more than um i don't know is beneficial that kind of thing yeah have you have you ever had an experience i spend a lot of time in the virtual world yeah yeah well we all do well, because it's the thin line there between the non-physical and the physical. Have you have you ever just had an experience mm -hmm. where you just went, holy crap, like like something is going on, like like you know that's defying the the physical senses, or that's just too much of a beyond an aberration, beyond you know something just like oh my god, I I know I'm more than this flesh and bones, or just I mean I don't know what, what what's been the most impactful experience or two that you've had. Where you just went, yeah, this is real. You know, I'm not crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I've had some experiences like that. I had one a few years ago where I was reading a book, uh, a channeled book by Paul Selig called I Am the Word. And there were these declarations in it the, and these, these big statements. And every time I said a statement, the wind was picking up very obviously, very loudly in response. And it happened, mm. you know, over a dozen to go okay this is consistent this is happening every time and i started to feel like the nature was playfully affirming things and 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 dancing with me in this experience and it it was that's one that really stands stands out to me that it felt too undeniable i was i was just laughing yeah. like okay wind i just said something and then the wind would pick up and join yeah. me in that dance so i was just <laughs> that's one that that stands out where i was just totally sober during the experience yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and just in so many synchronicities you know that it it's hard to even put my finger on certain ones but yeah. just these moments where yeah. everything seems to line up for something to happen and it it seems um just very hard to imagine it as simply coincidence yeah isn't that true though you know i mean you can you can separate each one of them and you can look at it as a coincidence or whatever, an aberration. But when you line them all up, there's no doubt, you know? Right. And I think this kind, yeah. this kind of information is good for people, whether they, 
woke up 10 years ago or think they woke up 10 years ago or, or yesterday? Because let me ask you this, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, in terms of, of the information that you're taking in elevations alignment, let's just put it that way. And what you're observing out there, do you see this thing moving faster and faster and faster? I mean, are you, are you moving faster and faster and faster? I mean, are you, are you elevating very quickly? Cause you seem to be. Yeah, I, I do get that sense of acceleration. It's interesting because today, today was the first day I had like a future plan. I started going through Facebook and, and copying in the idea of possibly putting it together in some sort of book and sharing it, everything from this year. And so I was able to go backwards through my evolution from, from the year to kind of it and change for me and how I did get this feel, this sense of like there's an acceleration happening for me yeah yeah I think he's echoing what most people are saying you know well here he, let's see if he's coming back now there he is you're Wait. back we heard you we heard you okay cool saying that you felt like yeah. it's, uh, it's definitely accelerating for you. Yeah. Yeah. And something that happened, I, I wrote a post in May that um, that brought a lot of friend requests my way and a lot more followers and a lot of like, it boosted my signal. And it brought all these people into my world that um, I'm resonating with like I like never before is, is the sense of it. That So part of the acceleration feels like um, the magnetism of people coming together that are drawn to this amplified signal and I'm drawn to their signal. And then there's something that wants to coalesce and co-create and, and happen as one. Um, so I do feel like a momentum there. That's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely uh, the non-physical aspect of, of this whole experience is coming into play in a bigger way every single day. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, in, I mean, like, you know, people talk about, I don't know, it, you know, I don't know, I see your perspective on, you know, the, the event or, you know, these big to do's that are going to occur, these carrots on the stick that, you know, even light worker communities put out, Chandler's put out, the government puts out, everybody puts out. What do you think of that bullshit? Oh, I guess you know what I think. <laughs> Yeah, you mean like but, uh, the the big moments that we're expecting the that gets us all excited well, about the future? Well, yeah, well, yeah, because I mean, I don't know how you look at it. I mean, I look at it more and more every day because I'm married to an energy practitioner. It's all energy, and and then the other part of it is the programming. And I, I don't know. To me, it's like that part of it's all that stuff's got to go now. It's like I don't know. We've entered this new state where. Like, you, like you're living, you know, where you're totally in the present. You're not really looking too far ahead. You're, you, and that's, in, that's a absolutely atypical of anything any of us were ever told to do. Right. So that's, that's a big, that's a big challenge. Is that the big challenge for you? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's so counter to the way we are raised and conditioned. So um, I encounter I encounter a lot of my own conditioning, and then a lot of that reflected to me from other people about why I shouldn't be living this way, why it's not okay. Um, uh, that I need to have a plan. That that people want really want me to have a plan, and they want to. It's uncomfortable for is... <laughs> for everyone when I seem to live in this um, this moment to moment space of I, I don't know I don't know what's yeah. going to happen I don't know what I'm doing next I just know that living from this space feels spacious and it feels liberating and it seems to be the space that my creativity thrives from and that feels important to me yeah yeah plan is a program isn't it <laughs> yeah you know i mean, I mean if a, i'm open to like things arising that that involve the future like this idea of this putting together this book for me but if it comes from any sense of separation and lack of fear energy and i i don't 
yeah. I don't seem to follow. And it feels like for the most part in my experience, future is linked to that for me. So I sort of have just let all that go. Um, yeah. 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 And are, are you finding any episodes where you find, uh, you know, the synchronicity, spontaneity, uh, spontaneous moments of where you're finding kind of like the experience you had with the wind where there seems to be like if you act on something and it's spontaneous and it comes in and you, and you go with it where you start to see coincidental synchronistic uh, reciprocation from external things are you experiencing anything yeah. like that definitely I, i'm not having any like big examples pop into my mind at the moment but it, it feels like that happens often where there's some sort of you know universal confirmation reflected to me that that gives me the feeling sense that where i am is where i'm meant to be um yeah and that i have been trusting myself I mean. even I'm, uh there's some doubt in my experience as well that yeah it kind of confirms that I, that i have been following my truth and my path more than sometimes i give myself credit for yeah well, no, I can relate to that. And I think a lot of people here can, I mean, if they're being honest with themselves, you know, I had an experience today coming back from the store and I was, I was in my head a little bit, a little bit, not too bad going, okay, mm -hmm. we've got to drive across the country. You know, we've got, it's a four day drive, you know, that's three hotels and, and I'm calculating gas and like something went, Hey, Hey, you know, you know, stop. And when that happened, this red tail hawk, which had been real big in my journey, swooped down in front of me and started circling. Mm -hmm. So the reason I can relate to what you're saying <laughs> is because you go, okay, okay, I'm good. And then you walk a little further, or, you know, next day or whatever, and, it, and that doubt comes in. How do you deal with the doubt? Oh, I think we lost him again. But I think he's bringing up a good point. You know, we get these I confirmations. Know. I get the sense that it it's just all. You just came that? back on right now. You just started talking right now. We couldn't hear you. Oh, okay. Um, the last thing I yeah. the last thing I said was, "How do you hand, How do you handle doubt? How do you handle that? You know, yeah. getting these." universal signs and then you know the doubt creeps in it often feels like doubt, doubt handles me <laughs> it has its way with me for a little while until it doesn't until trust comes back until something plays itself out something's revealed i don't exactly know what that process is but it, it seems to just I, I often feel like there's not much i can do I, I I feel a more surrendered um, response to to the denser energies in life, like doubt. So, um, I don't know. I I just imagine it to have a, a a valuable part in this game. So I don't I don't try to fight it or resist it. But it just I react however I do in the moment until it passes. Yeah. Good. That's good. That's good advice. That's very good advice. I mean, I know a lot of people have struggled with it. I've struggled with it. Um, and I've learned to just I kind of do what you do, you know, whatever it is, whether it's a doubt or something else or whatever, and just say, okay, I'm feeling this, you know, so what? Right. I mean, not like, so what, like yeah. it goes away, but I just say, okay, I'm going to let myself feel this. And that seems to help. Yeah. That seems to help. But I, yeah. but I find it interesting what you said, um, you know, where you have these, these, uh, you know, these omens and these signs and synchronicities. And then, and then you get slapped with, you know, you walk into Walmart and, you know, get accosted by the, uh, the greeter or something happens <laughs> like that, you know, or a bill comes in or something, you know, or, or a cop right. pulls you over. But, um, yeah. do, do, do you see, do you see, and I'm not trying to ask a leading question. I really want to get your, your perspective. Do you see it falling into place? I mean, regardless of the pace, do you see things starting to fall into place like the like the the atypical or I would even say the magical or the synchronistic is actually starting to to uh, sustain itself and expand? 
do you, do you, can you relate to that? Um, yeah. You mean in my experience or more in like what I observe in the world or maybe both? Well, I would say by your experience, you know, as the individual goes, so goes the collective. I mean, that's the way I've always looked at it, but right. I would yeah. It's all kind of, because, thing, right? yeah, because, be, because of the fact that you, but okay. Based on the old normal, you're very atypical, you know, and, uh, but so what's important to me, you know, in my own journey is, 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 you know, my own perspective, obviously, but I'm just wondering from your perspective, because I know people tell you you're crazy. I know they tell you you need to get a plan. I know, you know, all that stuff. We've all been through that yet. You're still doing it. Do you see it? Uh, yeah. Do you see your path, this new path being supported more and more? Do you see things working in your favor or how's that going for you? I do. Yeah. I guess the, <clears throat> the, the greatest gauge of like, what I might call progress or momentum in a direction that I enjoy is my heart just feels like it's opening more and more. Um, yeah. To put it simply, it's, I like who I am becoming more and more. I, I feel more in integrity with myself. I feel mm. um, that I can trust myself more. And I, and I notice yeah. that my connections with people are just becoming yeah, more and more heart centered and, and free from some of the tensions and attachments that have sort of ruled, ruled my way of existing in the past that um, it's less of a sense that I need anything specific for, from anyone specific. And then all I'm really desiring is to dance in the mutual yes, the moment, the moments, what the other person's to create with me and it it feels for for life as well not just with people that um something in me just isn't trying to force things in the way that i used to so there's less tension yeah. around a lot of things that there used to be there used to be more a desire for control than there is now and that yeah. feels really yeah. yeah yeah the control thing is that's been a uh, that's been a, a big thing for everybody, whether, you know, people talk about them, you know, the patriarchal system and the false masculine, but, but everybody was subjected to the control programming. You know, I think, yeah. you know, as I'm talking to you, I'm looking at it like if there was a nefarious force behind whatever, I could mm -hmm. see where you need a plan uh, is a program and, you know, kind of like a conveyor belt, stick them on the conveyor belt, stick them on the conveyor belt. Now we're all jumping off the conveyor belt saying, go, you know, F yourself. And we're going to do what we want to do, Yeah. but it's, it's not, it's not always peaches and cream, you know? So it's nice to hear yeah. somebody talk about the reality of, of what they're doing. Uh, so yeah. many people that I've come across, you know, so many people living in a relative's house uh you know move back in with the parents uh displaced mm -hmm. i mean you know if you look at the whole ball of wax it's not because these people are crazy and it's not because they're doing it by their own volition all the time mm -hmm. it's actually external forces that seem to be pushing them out of relationships and pushing them away from jobs and pushing them out of their homes and stuff like that like like you know mm -hmm there's more to it than meets the eye yeah so i mean yeah. and and do you do you meet up with many people um that you meet online yeah more so lately i mean that that sort of became a part of my world around last spring or summer that i started feeling these really resonant connections with people that from different parts of the world and different parts of the country um and I have met up with some and it's been it's okay we lost him again yeah that's cool he'll come back mm. well we got 45 minutes out of it anyway we can get back together with him. Can you hear me, Troy? Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, you're back. 
Yeah, I can hear you. Can't see you. It's just your signal. That's all right. So yeah, we should get together again sometime, man. And when we have a better connection, we should we should get together again and, and shoot the you know shoot the breeze. You're in you're in Ta Taos. Uh, how far is that from Sedona? I'm just curious. Do you know? All right, we lost them. All right, we'll give them a couple of minutes and see if we can pick them back up. And if not, let me just remind everybody: uh, in an hour and thirteen minutes, we have Mary Rodwell joining us on Soul Speaks Five D. And I think that'll be a very amazing show. She's not been on our show before. She's very esteemed, um, very well known, and very credible. So um, I think that's going to be a really good show. If you guys uh, get a chance to watch it live, it'll be on in an hour and 13 minutes. And if not, uh, you can always catch the replay on Facebook. And we're caught up on YouTube. I think I missed about 15 from a couple of months ago, but but we're, we're caught up. So everything's uh, going to is posted on YouTube. Can you hear me? Troy? Yep. Troy. Yep. I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. I think what we should do is uh, let's get back together again when you have a better connection and maybe we'll spend some time together and uh, cultivate yeah. the uh, collaboration. You're up for it. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with the connection. It's yeah, it is what that's it cool. is. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. There we go. But look, man, I appreciate it. Uh, best of luck to you. And uh, look forward to doing something again with you soon if you're up for it. And uh, we might be headed that way. I don't know how how close we'll be to Taos, but we're going to be hitting the road here, the God's willing, in uh, two, three days. And uh, Oh, yeah. Let hitting. me know if you end up in this area. Well, mm -hmm. I know Taos is nice. I've never, I've never been to Taos, but... Uh, yeah, yeah it's way. beautiful. We've got some friends in Silver Springs. Mm -hmm. um, Akurta, Akurta, I don't know if you've heard of Akurta Makisadek. Uh, Wanda Vitale's up there. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure where she's at. Uh, there's somebody else that just I can't I can't remember. Too old. <laughs> so, but we might be heading that mm -hmm. way. And if not, we'll we'll get together online and do another show if you're up for it. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. I've really enjoyed this and enjoyed your presence and getting to know you thank you so much for having me right on you take care man peace out we'll see y'all later yeah, we'll be back in 13 minutes with mary rodwell